Welcome to 6.5 On The Road, coming to you from HPE Discover Las Vegas 2025. I'm Dave Nicholson, and we have a gentleman here from AWS, Andy Palmer. Welcome. Hi, thank you very much what for having me. What do you do at me. AWS, Andy? Yeah, good question. So I lead the technical field teams for what we call our strategic accounts business. Uh, my teams in particular have depth and expertise in a variety of domains of technology. Many of whom you'd probably come to expect, everything from data and analytics, AI and machine learning, and now with that, generative AI, uh, and some more as well. But no stranger to AWS. I've been here for about four years now and was a former customer, in fact, for six. Oh, fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Well, so what is the AWS perspective now on you know we know where we are where we're sort of we're, we're, we're in the thick of generative absolutely Definitely. but a lot of buzz is around uh, agentic yes talk yes. to us about that yeah we're super excited by this uh, I think it's safe to say and the way that we think about this at AWS is you know our job in helping our customers to kind of democratize and to be able to build these agentic AI experiences really stems from a lot of our investments in infrastructure and security and systems. That shows up a lot for customers today with our Amazon Bedrock service, mm -hmm. which is, this is a managed service that we have to build generative AI applications. It has all the tools and resources necessary from the broadest and deepest selection of foundation models, uh, for all the tools that you need to be able to customize using your own data. It could be everything from fine tuning, retrieval augmented generation, and all the security built in. So the best part about it and what customers love is that since it's a managed service, you can scale and grow very cost effectively. You're only paying for what you use and all the security is built in. So you, you, know, you own your data, uh, you own the keys, it never leaves your account. And so that's really important for enterprises as they're trying to build these applications. And you're right, we're on this wave to kind of agentic AI. And, and so we're, we're spending a lot of time in this like, like a lot of folks. And we do have what we call our Amazon Bedrock Agents project, or product, sorry, rather, which, uh, which is by far and away the easiest way to get up and running and building agents. And you could go into the console today within just a few clicks and you're up and running. And so you start by picking a foundation model. We have lots of choices for this, by the way. We have our own proprietary first party models from, from Amazon that we call Amazon Nova. Mm -hmm. We've got third party models from the likes of Anthropic and even open source alternatives from Meta's Llama to even DeepSea. And so the model's job is to really simply break down and orchestrate the tasks then you define a set of agents. You basically just give them some instructions or a goal or maybe an outcome that you want to see. And then you can say, here's the access to the data that I want you to have. And or maybe even here are some tools. Could be an API to call, for example, that they can use. Uh, and that's it. And, and you're up and running. So one of my favorite words in our business is co-opetition. Huh. You look at the world of AI right now and you have these clashes of titans at a, at a variety of levels. Um, you mentioned Anthropic. On the subject of strategic partnerships, what is what's the what's the state of the relationship with Anthropic and AWS, and then how does that line up with the rest of what you were just saying, which yeah. is the fact that look, yeah, Meta, Llama, yeah. whatever whatever you need, AWS is there to be sort of a Switzerland, while at the same time doubling down on some strategic relationships. How do you manage that? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good question. I, you know, it's it's. I think the strategy for us is to continue to offer customers a lot of flexibility and choice. Uh, that's been perennially true for us for a long time, and we think that's going to be, continue to be true even in this agentic realm. But just one quick example, and I'll come back to the anthropic question. So we also, for customers who are building agents, they've also said to us, hey, we want the ability to do even more rich customization. We want more control. We want to be able to have access to the code. So we created an offering in open source just a few weeks ago called the Strands SDK. And this is a quickly becoming popular open source agent framework project that gives customers a whole host of choice and flexibility on where they run it and how they run it, even which model they use. So they're not even, they're not even constrained to models necessarily on bedrock. They could pull models in from other third party sources to go build these applications. And what we've done deliberately and different from I think other projects out there is we've taken a model driven approach, which means rather than having to define and describe relatively rigid workflows and have to be really opinionated, we offload that to the model because these reasoning engines continue to get better and better because of their chain of thought and their ability to do reflection. And so we, we see this becoming very popular with customers because what it means is that as the models get better, the outcomes get better. And so you're kind of innovating in place. Uh, but you're right, Anthropic is a, is a really important partner for us. We've been investing with them and collaborating with them for, for quite a while. Uh, 
in a number of ways. I, I think one of the most interesting ways we've been helping them is through hardware and through our own proprietary hardware. So we are right now working on building one of the world's largest uh, compute clusters ever built to help Anthropic train and develop their next generation model. And that's running on our own proprietary ML chip that we call Trainium 2. And if you can believe it, the, stat, the, the cluster that we're building is five times bigger than the one that we just did with them to build uh, Claude 4, which was just announced a few weeks ago, which is by far and away you know, the world's state-of-the-art model as it stands today. So just a, min, a tremendous compute power that's, that's coming with this. The thing I'm, thing I'm also really excited about in our partnership with, with Anthropic is uh, working with them in open source on what they call the model context protocol. You may have heard yep, of this. Sure, MCP. MCP, right? So MCP, as you know, it, it aims to standardize the connection from these agents to data and agents to tools. And it's just caught in the world by storm. And I think a lot of people can see why, because this will totally transform the kind of agentic use cases and capabilities that customers can, can use and, and create. And But we've also acknowledged, hey, there's more needs to be done to make it ready for enterprises, and that's where we're helping uh, Anthropic to, to, to make those investments. And even going so far as to say, how can we make MCP support agent-to-agent -agent communication? Yeah. Because as we now know, that's going to be a massive unlock in, in really this proliferation of a potential agent economy. And so excited about seeing those developments come Yeah, through. I mean, the optimized full stack always makes sense. Right. And then also offering other versions yeah. of things always makes sense. Um, I happen to use Claude as a go-to. Yeah. A lot of people who have their first interactions with LLMs are interacting with a trained model that knows nothing about them. That's right. And then you start getting the ability to sort of train it or at least give access to the model to your own data. And then as an individual, yeah. you start going, oh, wait a minute, where's this data going, <laughs> right? Yeah. We, I mean, we know, yeah. that, we know that data is at the center of all of this. So at, true. The, at the enterprise level, um, I know that, that AWS has this concept of the sort of unified data platform. What, is, yeah. what does that look like? How does, it, how does an enterprise gather up all of their knowledge yeah. and all of their information so that it can be leveraged securely by these models as we move yeah, forward? Yeah, that's right. And, and, you know, and as you kind of alluded to, I think for the longest time, our customers have realized that data is their differentiator. Sure. And, and that's true under any context and circumstance. But I think now that we're moving into this agentic world, it's becoming inc inc more true now than ever before. And the way I like to think about this as well is we're kind of, we're kind of entering a world where we're going to very well see more agents interfacing with data than we have traditionally, say, humans and APIs. And so a lot has to change for these agents to be able to successfully power these use cases. And I think of this more like, what's the context engineering that's going to be required across all of these varieties of data states to make that happen? And, and there's a few ways that we're helping our customers do exactly what you described, just kind of unifying both data and AI together. Uh, our SageMaker Lakehouse product, which is something that we just announced several months ago at, at reInvent, really is, is aims to pull those data sources together. So for example, S3 data lakes, which is still by far and away the most popular way that customers are building data lakes today, sure. alongside more structured engines and systems like Redshift for data warehousing. But even now the ability to integrate that with third party sources that aren't even in the you know, AWS environment, to give customers a unified way to query and interact with their data all on a single copy, by the way, without having to move data around. On top of that, the next thing that we do is we're helping customers unify the actual experience of them building the applications. And so bringing together the tools from AWS analytics tools and our AI tools, all wrapped with the right level of collaboration tools to allow teams to be able to work jointly and create you know, the data and prepare the data to go create these AI experiences. And so all the tools for sharing and governance and control is all built into that unified experience. And then I'd say the last way that we're really helping customers and think about this is the thing that we hear most often is we want really fast access to the data. And sure. something that, we, uh, that we've announced and we're working on as well is what we call Amazon S3 tables. So this is a purpose-built object uh, inside of S3 that natively talks Apache Iceberg, which is by far and away the most popular open table format that we see our customer, customers gravitating to. 
And the fact that it's built inside uh, of S3, we've been able to do a, a lot of work to optimize the performance. And what customers are seeing is upwards of 3x performance and you know, query throughput performance over maybe self-managed uh, uh, iceberg tables inside of S3. So, you know, we nearly got to a point I don't have a good calendar in my head, but it was a few years ago. We nearly got to the point with cloud, with AWS, um, where you could look a customer in the eye and say, do you really care what silicon this lives on as long as I deliver this service that you're seeking? And they would think for a moment and they would say, no, I don't, I don't. But today, interestingly enough, um, it's a critical conversation in a lot of places. And, you, and, and AWS is building custom silicon. You, right. you talked about this a little bit. Uh, just double click on that. Why? Why? Why do you have to build custom silicon? Isn't there, isn't there a giant company out there that builds GPUs? Can't you just buy a bunch of them from them? I mean, yeah. What, you know. Yeah, there, there is a giant. Can't you just become a subsidiary of that company? <laughs> there is a giant company out there who we love to partner with. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We love to partner with. Um, it's, it's in our DNA to provide, I think, customers' choice and optionality, and, and for a variety of reasons. But we are investing heavily in AI, particularly in hardware and infrastructure. We've already committed to spending upwards of $100 billion in just 2025 alone, which is a significant lift even from the prior year as well. And you're right, a good way we're doing that is, is through our own investments in our ML chips. Tranium for training workloads, yep. Inferentia for inference. Because in every case and circumstance, it continues to come up that these customers, you know, cost matters. Yes. It's always such an inhibitor. And as customers are evaluating their return on investment, and what may or may not go to production, that's usually one of the biggest reasons why maybe something gets shelved and gets put aside. But what we're finding is these, these chips that we've built, they're, they're purpose-built accelerators designed to do AI training and AI inference from the ground up. And our customers who are using these chips are oftentimes out of the box seeing upwards of 30 to 40 percent you know, cost performance benefit, which is, which is a huge huge enabler for them to get those workloads into production, give them optionality uh, as well across you know, the potential fleets of accelerators that are out there. It's an interesting comment to make about cost because many of us are insulated from the actual cost. So you have, you have customers that are deploying real things yes. and the real cost is being passed on to them while the rest of right. us are paying $200 a month or, tw or $20 a month or whatever it is, but we're not paying for everything that we're doing because in fact, large language model purveyors are investing That's right. in this. And so it's going to be interesting as the dust settles to see the case that will be made by AWS for this idea of, hey, look, we, we designed all of this to work together. It's more efficient. Therefore, cost effectiveness. That's right. What about the HPE relationship? We're here at HPE yeah. Discover. Las Vegas 2025. Yeah. Great, by the way. And uh, I know, I, I, I love the way that they pull this off, I, I have to say. And I, I, and I participate in a lot of these kinds of things, and this is a favorite. Um, but what does the relationship with HPE and AWS look like? Because clearly, you do things that overlap, you do things that complement one yeah. another, and you do things where you compete, no question about it. What does that relationship look like? I think we've got a you know, fantastic partnership and relationship with, with HPE. I would love to say there's, I, I always think there's probably more that we could be doing. I think, you know, that's just, uh, uh, I think it's a, a safe way to, to put it, but um, we're already helping HP in a number of ways today, and, and even on their agentic AI journey. And I think a really good example of this today would be if you look at the work that we're doing with Aruba uh, in helping bring together some of the best AI capabilities from AWS to totally transform the way that actually Aruba is managing billions of endpoints all around the world. And this is helping Aruba to a much more proactive approach and, and allowing uh, Aruba to be able to infuse things into that product, such as uh, uh, you know, network autonomous monitoring, uh, reasoning, and then even doing like advanced issue resolution with very minimal human intervention. Uh, so we're excited about that partnership. I think with all the announcements that we've heard over the last couple of days, there's going to be more for us to go think about and, and, and go do together. But I think that's a really good example of taking some of the best of AWS's hardware, uh, AI ML capabilities, Amazon Bedrock, along with Aruba's network leadership, to create a real industry-first solution for autonomous network you know, management solutions. Andy Palmer. AWS, thanks so much for joining Great. us here. Thank you so much. Six five on the road. For those of you who are asking the question, how do I save money? How do I make money? 
with AI? What do I do first? You should be very, very happy to know that AWS and HPE are working together. So Andy, again, thank you so much. Thank you Andy for having me. AWS. Much appreciated. For 6.5 on the road, I'm Dave Nicholson. Stay tuned for more amazing content.